Hello, everyone. Following the German tradition, let's start on point 12. So, good evening, everyone. And my name is Elio, and I'm here to actually talk about um, the whole difficulty things that the whole automotive industry are facing right now to get Linux in there. I'm trying to go a little bit faster in the faster slides because I want to give some space for more questions in the end because I think the last slides will open more questions for them. So let me present myself. So my name is Elio Castro. Um, I'm Brazilian but live in Germany almost five years right now. I'm working for BMW Car IT. It's one part of the BMW Group. It's not uh, very known to everyone, but BMW Group is a huge holding that uh, mostly know about having a Mini and Rolls Royce as well together with BMW. And Ulm is in the middle between uh, Munich, our headquarters, and uh, Unterschlesheim, where the self-driving development center. Ulm is basically the center of the software development where we do integration and, and basically development on everything. This is the building there. And since I was open source developer, I've been KD developer since ever, and then I joined in this very snowy time for a Brazilian. Arrive in a country, snowing is a very completely different thing. So, let's talk about the industries. So every single industry is different. Uh, one thing that people really don't realize when you're talking about Linux and adopting Linux is like we're not talking about and putting Linux inside your computer anymore and just use it. Every single industry has their peculiarity and then it's very detailed things that the people need to understand. So. If you're looking around about mobile industry, it's a real embedded system in the past, adopted Linux through Android really late. I was part of the Nokia Project N9 before the arrival at, uh, arrival at BMW. So it's really the legacy Unix and Linux-based platform oriented. So that's how you're looking around. There's a telecon. Telecon is a Unix legacy application. It comes from the long, long, long time ago. It's completely different about the mobile there. So it's easy translatable for Linux world. That's why it's just the first industry that adopted massively. Then we have aerospatial. This dedicated applications, heavily dependencies on safety aspects. It means that we barely see Linux running there. We will understand in the, uh, in the Next slides there, why? And for example, financial. Financial is FTS applications, then it's easy translatable to Unix and Linux there and the time is a legacy there, so it's easy there. But we have automotive. So assembly lines are unique and LTS is like long time service. So we think that usually cars need to be maintained like 10 years. In the modern world today, 10 years, computers is like ages. So why assembly lines are so important? There's several models of cars are still building. It was designed before years, and then we have one, two years, three years, five years of designs that actually has been produced there. So, it is several tools to actually prepare the cars. They are in a line. This is actually, I wrote there, pun intended, because it's literally a line. So it doesn't matter which car you're doing, it's one after another. The assembly line does go until the end there. And if something fails in the one car, it stops the whole assembly line. It's money there. And then the companies cannot afford to actually use multiple tools, it need to be the same. On BMW, you have one single tool and for each operation there, and you need to follow exactly these strictly rules, usually made at home. And then, and unlikely other companies, we cannot simply create a new assembly line for a new model of car. It would be unbearable in terms of price. So, in Linux. So our main bumps that we have actually there was adopted the resulting platform to be used in assembly line without interfering with the current process. Current process, I mean the cars that we are buying today and what is already in an assembly line. The moment that you put the new software and start to flash in the new cars, we are dealing with exactly what's happening already. 
So we cannot stop the line. It's not a simple thing that if not working, we just fix it there. No. And most of the tools are legacy tools. It's coming like several detail formats and other things that come in from ages. So the, for the one I explained in later is that, for example, the interface for BMWs, the same code runs in several ages of cars. This is just apply it and use it on several times. So we basically, we need to adopt and still use it there in the modern environment without affecting what is there in legacy environment. And the resultant deployment should be transparent. So when you go onto the factory, the workers on the factory doesn't understand, oh, you are using Linux, we are doing different. No, it's like they press exactly the same button, the process needs to be the same. They don't care about it. The resulting in the end is like the car running. That's it. So BMW already has Linux. If you actually buy a BMW on the last, two, last year for the modern ones, Serious, it's coming with a head unit. It's, the head unit is fully Linux. Why is this first one? Is the foundation for the big plan. Why is so like the first one? Because we have an important factor called it. We don't have safety involved inside the head unit. Despite the something that people say that, oh, we can hack the cars, plug in something on head units and connect the car and everything. No, it's actually not true. Because this is completely the couple of the, the, the safety systems of the car. We have specific comments for basically non-safety related today there. This will change in the future because the car will become unique. But in this case, so the head unit was a very good example. You can see here in the, the pictures, the Mini and the BMW there running there, and the, and the development station that we have at, at our offices there. So it's behind the project of the head unit. It's, we did the OS from the scratch, non-safety relevant there. It's full Linux based on Yocto, and we get a nod for the Geneva project. And there, this is part of this one there. So we use it Yocto for this part. It's a fully based, it was completely integrated on Yocto. And the UX are completely ported to Linux. So it's exactly the same UX you're using every evolution. So if you're talking about BMW UX, you can hear about, oh, you are using ID5, ID7, ID6. So it's exactly how it, the generations of the interface for the BMW are developed. It's the continuous integration and made in-house. So it's the first time that we made every single process there. So the software enter in the form of source code and end up in the integration there. It was my first project when they entered in BMW, and that's exactly, uh, we are did an integration part when the, the resulting things go directly to the factory there. So, so what is the actually now? My current job is actually I'm lead of the OS team there, and uh, we are supposed to put Linux entirely on the cars right now, not anymore the parts of the, on the head unit or details there. Everything that we'll be using in the future will be based in Linux, and it is really hard. This is the four related parts that I want to say about. First one, and the most important one, and right in the moment, safety. So Linux is not functional safety qualified. So in automotive world, different from the other industries, we have protocols called, uh, standards called AZUB, AZUD, so automotive, software, interfa interfaction level, that's actually safety levels that actually determine how much you can able to fail or not during several thousand of operations there. It's, it's a little bit lower than actually you have in, in the airplane and uh, aerospace industry, but still it's very hard. So we are putting some, in some place that you can actually uh, could endanger the environment around. And Linux was not safety qualified yet. It's mostly not technical work. It's actually a, a lot of specification work, a lot of investigation work. And so this we are having two steps right now. The current project is now in the analysis. For this, exactly, we need to specify very strict things, like we need to fix one kernel, we need to fix the compiler, we need to fix the options of the compiler, 
we need to see how the things are built in every single detail, and you go to what is really safety qualified or not, and we cannot simply change like that in the future for the updates. It's not something, it's a little like an embedded project, but a little bit further because it's more, you need to be more safe. It's really hard. And BMW joined the Linux Foundation, that's a project that's called ELISA, as founder, that's, we, we are the, one of the first to join this project, that in the, to make Linux safety qualified in the future. We hope that Linux uh, will be, on, at some point, use it everywhere. And you want to have the Linux as the car and everything. So the ELISA project is really the, one of the main goals on this. The second thing, security. That's what I say. Security is something that everyone actually understands in the Linux world. That's no deal. So why are you talking about security? Yes, because uh, we still need to deal with algorithms, restrictions. We need to need deal with everything that's happening is around there. It's the protocols is more than not simple protocols as that we actually know is not simple uh, this protocol or simple MD5 or whatever you use it, it's always, it comes for different kind of protocols that you need to be introduced. And you need to actually some point qualify the connection and then the communication about this. And that's uh, interdependency with safety aspects. Because we cannot simply say that we're not uh, put in the cryptography there and everything, and you can guarantee that this will be completely safe at the end. So this is, the part that you understand security, but in the end, we need to do a lot of things in there. The third part is about compliance. Compliance is the logical thing, because uh, it's, uh, in general, companies that start to open source without thinking about compliance don't know what is, this is minefield. And there's a way to solve this. So what happens when you release a product? This is exactly what happens. So we release in the i3, and then the, some guy look and, oh, they are using Linux inside the i3. The head unit is i3. So the guy wrote to the dealer, that's not exactly the right way, but anyway, it's like a consumer understands. A car was bought to the dealer, so talk to the dealer. I want the source code. He's on the right side. Yes, I want the source code to every single source code there. He's exactly wrote about that because I know that BMW will not answer. I know that actually they were not able to do that. He wrote, it actually is echoed a lot of the internet. But he didn't know about this. Oh, we answered that. Basically, he just wrote for the dealer that didn't actually understand that. If you get at the end, of the whole process on the screen with all the license that we are mandatory to be, and they are in the screens of the car, he says, if you need something for the source code or things, please send to this email. So the guy send the email and say, oh, we're not to answer there. And we answer, and then we send a DVD with full source code of i3, and the guy put that online on GitHub, and still there today. Did we bother with that? No, we are really happy. And I want to tell to you about and what we actually doing since the start of the project. Every single build, I'm not talking about one time and about the release and every time, every single build that you create an image inside the CI, it comes automatically with a set of turbos and an image of open source software user there with license, everything compliance. So we don't need to bother to discover this. Since the beginning, we started to make this and this actually paid off. He apologized and actually made the blog and it was there. And he even find some security flaws inside the code, which was perfect because it's exactly what we expected. So then we could be able to solve it. We fix it. There you go. And this is one thing that is very important. Compliance for there, it's okay. But we need to go farther. So we are part of a group of open source compliance. With this tool is one example that we can really use it. It's really available, full open source group is a huge, a huge project there. We can have a full tool chain of open source compliance for all this open source software there. And uh, we, can, uh, we can do it in this 
today from the CIA. So it is this guarantee that the peace of the lawyers at some point, at least at least the first time, which is really hard to do it. And of course, the ecosystem. This is actually a very curious thing. And this, you know, automotive industry never uses Linux, and not open source as like effective there. They are actually using it internally to development, but not to produce there. So most of the people using some other proprietary systems, their specific safety qualified uh, operational systems, is completely fair. Does not exist at that time. It mean, and in, in uh, software industry for automotive has a huge amount of companies around it. It's not one, two, three, it's several ones. Meaning that these people are working with legacy systems. And the com people working in the, inside the company are working with legacy systems. They never touched sometimes Linux before. And we are jumping completely in Linux. So they understand about the past, but the new one they don't have time to understand. We, fee, uh, we face some large problems that people are still developing software like the old one. And you need to actually teach them. But this has happened during the process there. So it's really complex there. In the end, that we even cannot, uh, cannot bear in the future doing this again. So we, what we should do, like, it's a recommendation that for uh, people that we are doing and jumping on Linux for some reason for an other environments, Please give time to training these people and they understand everything there. Because they are afraid to do it exactly the things that are very critical and safety critical in their job. And they know about one way and they are not trusting and doing a different way and sometimes it hurts the process. So we need to teach people about that. This is the really difficult thing. We are not simply cannot hire another amount of developers it's imp even if you can afford in ter terms of money, you know that's impossible today to find developers. Everyone is hiring. And the second thing is that we cannot simply change in a team or simply asking them. And that's the fact, human factor that actually they, they have afraid to do with new things and to do it in a different way. It's, it needs it need to be understood. And this, this is not a simple thing that we actually expect that, okay, you know about C or C++, so you understand everything to do C, C++, other side. It's not the same, really. You need, and you need to be clear about that. This is the ecosystem around you will change, and you need to teach the ecosystem how it will change. So, Zukunft, future. Oh, overview of the future projects. So, with, for this current project, I, I think a lot of questions will come from this one, but we have multiple architectures running in parallel inside the, the car. This is for the future cars. We have strictly separation, is meaning in the development way, we, we need to make it an easy way to separate how the operational system, how the SDK, and how the applications are developed. Because otherwise, if you in, try to integrate everything together, the, the, the speed will go down, and it will be very difficult, and it force people to work on the more things they should do, actually. We have everything fully integrated on our CI, and no binary blobs at all. We, we, in this beginning of the project, we really ask that no binary blobs. This is not coming anything. Doesn't matter where it comes, doesn't matter which it is. It's based on, based on latest Linux LTS. Right now we are using 419. Why? It's because that at the time that we decided to fix the project, the new LTS will not be available. If the new LTS will be available in time that we, we deem it that actually safe to, uh, to go to the project, we'll go for that. But we expect that this will be 419. And it will be basic for the dynamic driving. It means that the car for self-driving in the future and BMWs will have full Linux. That's exactly what is expected there. I think that's for this. I got a little bit faster then. Thanks, and I want to open for the, uh, the questions that because then I can explain better some details. So.
why we decided to go Linux. Well, this, we made the, the first head unit, and the results were really appreciated. Uh, and we really... Is it Sorry? Is it the of the no, no, this is... It's, a, it's a basically, the reason is exactly that. So the first project was started first in the open source, and the car IT is working in open source, then we decided to go to head unit, and the head unit was, the, the project was really successful. So, it, uh, the, so the next one say, can we actually go full Linux? And the, the high management decided yes, that's it. It's a big, bold uh, thing. Yes, so we are using a, a real-time patch. Uh, yes, you are using the official real-time patch. It's no, no secret that this is comment uh, this. And um, we are even uh, part of it, uh, talking with the Linux Foundation, we're part of the project for LTL and the Linux Foundation as well. So it's not secret about that. Okay, let's go first there, then there. We need to have support for 10 years, everything. It needs to be safety qualified. It needs to be on the road at the point that to be safe. It's, the point is that it's not different for any other operational system. We just don't have the papers that say safety qualified in there. But at the point, it needs to be supported. It's no question about that. Minimum 10 years, expected for more. And there and there. Yep. It's a, it's a very hard question. I, I simply cannot answer with that. And uh, the, 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 I can say the main question right now, I say no. We not expect that. And they need to be supported and fixed and as long that it is stay there. But and, uh, I will be lying that as, as at some point, some things can happen that uh, you needed to do that. But right now, official answer for uh, coming, at least from our side, is just coming. Uh, no, we, we are stay there and maintain this one as long as possible. That's why actually you, we are taking measures to participate to exactly the foundations that we can guarantee that this happens in the future. So this. Yep. The head unit in the past, yes, graphics it has binary blobs. Future, not anymore. We are don't, we are putting this specifically in the requirements. So we are going after that. There's uh, no question asked there. Yeah, I know that's difficult principally because the, the graphics, um, what's, my background comes from graphics as well. I understand about the whole algorithms and video playback there. Yeah, but we expect no binary blobs. There's actually no reason to have binary blobs as long as we have contracts on the points. This, so we are going after that. It, sometimes it cannot, Cannot happen because it's basically contact tracing, but our end goal is that. Today is only head unit, and this project means everything. Is how far down is like everything. Yes. Yeah. So and then here and then you go down. Okay. Um, so Note in this case, there's no way to solve it, but we are not using any video at the moment. So it, if. If in the future we need to use NVIDIA, yes, there's something that we cannot uh, solve it by ourselves. It's true. But in, uh, in, the, in general things, mm, no, this is.
Yeah, I, under, I understand the question because they come from this background and open source a long time and Linux distributions there. And the, the reality is a little bit different. We are talking about, so, so we, we need to separate. And this, if you're thinking about feelings itself, yes, we are thinking about that. But as a company, there, if the, the proper business decision is done, is something that we cannot simplify. Yes, we love that to uh, go to uh, follow the ideology on this one, but uh, I don't think that's the not reality. Either. Yeah, well, this is okay. Internally, we actually do that. So this is, it needs to be evaluated for several people. It's not there that we have a whole process. So it's not simply blindly accepted. We are explaining about the situation and then it's accepted or not, that's the point. But this is not something that we go blindly. They say, can, cannot do that. So this turn there, okay. Well, this is, well, explaining the whole process in there. Uh, and it's everyone, who knows about adaptive AutoZar, AutoZar itself? So AutoZar is basically operational system that was made in for there. And then we decided that an AutoZar itself, depending of some operational system, in the case is most common is Aurix. And the Aurix is it's already there, we start, the, it's basically the start car and the startup. And then we need, okay, the, the ECU need to have some software. This, the uh, autos are itself, we're not, it's not the base of the ECU, we need something more powerful. We're talking about self-driving and other things. So we have the choices of operational system. We have some trials of other operational systems. In the end, Linux, and we already have the basic exp expertise because the head unit. So there we go, we go into Linux. The CI is already, when to have the full expertise, we have an internal CI entirely made it for the, the head unit. So we created the new CI completely from the ground to your to running Linux. And to get it right in the process, we code software, we send the CI, the CI build the CI, put the images, it goes to the test uh, ECU units, it tests the ECU units, and provide the full software ready to actually simply flash. So we get one point to the other point. No, no human intervention. That's it. Oh, yep. So as you're trying to extend the reach of Linux, are you also then bringing up more in terms of virtualization and things like that? So you're bringing more into one processor that you segmented off for safety? Or is it yeah, okay, so let's put it this way. Uh, and the base system is still the base system. It's Linux there. So we with we we'll go for using a separated uh, protected containers for parts of there. And uh, this will be, then we will need to be exactly separated what is running or not and how it communicates will be the server control. Yes, we are going in, in this way. Uh, it's still ongoing development because our target is future. It's not exactly for the generation that you buy in now. But uh, yes, we are looking for this part. We already have a setup for this. Yeah. Um, when possible, yes. Uh, because mostly the time we are still um, users of the open source. We are not exactly uh, modifying the software there. With the, for example, the software that we already modified in the upstream and parts is DLT the logging daemon that actually open source from GNV. So in the, in the stage of the, uh, the project for Heady unit, actually several softwares had some upstream code coming, and Yocto has part. We are able to actually do, do Yocto compile two or three kernels at the same time on the same build. People, what people say that's when it's possible, we did it there, because we needed to generate, the, be able to the resulting software generated, be running on the emulator directly instead of going to ECU, and we also needed to have build in two times this to reduce the time of completion. So this is another thing that we can say today. Uh, based on the previous experience, the current project, 
The same software that we are generating on the, on the build for the car can be running on the emulator at the same time. So we have the real experience directly and it makes the life of the developer easier. Yes, so, so um, it's, the project comes in this way. The, the, the whole car, the assembly design is made by the Matrix in Munich, that's the sign. We, have, uh, we are directly part of the project of self-driving, and we are doing the base system, but we are connected to the self-driving team. So it is, uh, in, in the end, we are doing the self-driving project completely. That's exactly where we're connected. So everything there, it is, it's already building on top of what you are doing during this process. So, okay. At this moment, no one. We are not going to hypervisors. And we... Yeah, actually, it's depending on the course and then how it actually, so this is the question is related to him. This is, one thing is about separations and virtualization. So you can actually uh, separate what is running there. So yeah, no, not to have hypervisor. Exactly, this is, it's started during runtime there. So you can, you, you can actually can, can, uh, can control exactly what is in one part and another one. We don't need to have an hypervisor. We have monitors, of course, but not an hypervisor in the sense. This is, and yes, we evaluated some hypervisors and there's no need to use hypervisors at this moment. We don't actually have the needed for that. This is so many layers on the top there as already and the hypervisor will be just complicated things and not actually have a uh, unit, uh, really usability. This may be a change in the future because next project coming, so there we go. So, okay, so basically I still have five minutes. So if no, have any more questions, I'll be around here, so please ask. Thanks for your presence here. And my email is there, feel free to email me. And go again. We're going full Linux. We're not joking about that. It's official. And uh, if you're looking on the press, so you're not only us, the software project, we have a cooperation with Mercedes that we, we are working on the same project as well. So it, it goes big there. It's just take time and the whole safety and everything you see that will take some time. Okay, thank you everyone.